What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number nine of the Everything NYJ podcast. Happy New Year. How you doing? Man, we got a lot to cover today, guys. It has been so far an interesting week, very eventful week in the life of the New York Jets and the New York Jets fans. We have so much to get into today. We got a ton of fan questions. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it, man. So the offseason is finally here, right? We ended the game Sunday against the Patriots, playing like dog crap. We still have more questions than answers. I got to that a couple days ago in the review reaction video. If you haven't seen that, definitely go check that out. All right, so let's get into some of the big news of the week, right? So obviously Adam Gaze was fired Sunday night and many players went on social media and they were celebrating, right? A lot of players were really happy about it, such as, you know, the Michael P. Ryan and Ty Johnson, Makai Becton, Quinn and Williams, right? It was very clear that this coach did not have the locker room, right? These guys didn't like him. They didn't play hard for him. They didn't play for him. They were playing for themselves and they really didn't care about him. And, you know, it showed because any good coach that the players like, they will make a case, the players, I mean, will make a case to keep the coach here, right? And these guys could not give him any respect, right? They didn't. They didn't. So Adam Gaze was obviously fired. The players were really happy about it. Monday, Christopher Johnson did uh, meet with the media. And, you know, basically, I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but basically he said he's tired of losing, right? Nothing that we didn't know, you know? And my biggest fear is this guy getting involved, and he said he's not going to get involved, right? He said Joe Douglas will be a huge influence. In his words, exactly, he said that Joe Douglas's opinion will be taken the most seriously. This is a good thing. This is what we want. We don't want the Johnsons getting involved with this, right? So in the years past, you know, it has not been good for the Jets, especially with their head coach shirts. Everybody knows that. You know, the Johnsons get the phone call from Peyton Manning and suddenly Adam Gaze is here, right? That's all it took. The Johnsons don't do anything about football. And we've been hearing this for weeks that the Johnsons are going to give like 90%, you know, control to uh, Joe Douglas, right? That they're not really going to get involved. They're going to be in there for the meetings. And Joe Douglas is, uh, like he said, you know, opinion is going to matter the most. We've been hearing the rumors about this on social media and on the internet. I didn't really know how true it was. But now that, you know, it's coming from the horse's mouth himself, we have something to believe, right? I do believe uh, this to be the case. So Christopher Johnson said that he's looking for a CEO type head coach, right? It doesn't have to just be one side of the ball. He doesn't want somebody who is just offensive minded like Adam Gaze was. He doesn't want somebody who is just defensive minded like Rex Ryan and Todd Bowles was. He wants somebody that's going to take control of the whole team. Somebody that knows, you know, both sides of the ball very well. And somebody that could just coach the entire team, right? That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a leader of men. We don't want these one-sided head coaches anymore, right? Some of them are great. Don't get me wrong. Some of them are great. But the Jets need, you know, help on both sides of the ball. And, you know, this is really smart to, you know, bring in somebody who is, you know, offense and defense savvy, right? Somebody who's innovative on both. That is the ideal head coach, guys. It really is. Right. So that was basically the big parts of the Christopher Johnson, you know, meeting. I, re I don't think I missed anything. There was really nothing too noteworthy. He just kind of, you know, said that he's not going to say anything bad about Adam Gaze, but for whatever reason, it didn't work. And, you know, it was really like whatever, right? So yesterday, Joe Douglas met with the media, and we didn't really get too much out of him, right? You know, he doesn't really give out too many answers. He's more of like the cliche kind of guy. He's the adult in the room. He's the businessman, and he's not going to say anything to give the media headlines, which I respect, right? We give ourselves plenty of bad publicity, plenty of bad headlines. We don't need them coming from the general manager of the team. So I completely understand why Joe Douglas gives the answers that he gives. His actions definitely speak louder than words, no doubt. But, you know, he did say a couple things. You know, he reflected on the season. He reflected on the players and said that we win and lose as a team. He always kicks his uh, press, conf uh, excuse me, press conferences off that way, which you know, fine, we do win and lose as a team because it really is a group effort, right? It's not just one side of the ball. It's not one player. It's not one man. You know, it's everybody coming together. It starts in the front office with the uh, Woody and Chris Johnson, more Chris Johnson now that Woody's really not in the picture. 
you know, Jaime, Joe Douglas himself, and then it goes down to the coaches and the players, right? So he said that we wouldn't lose as a team, and he said that, you know, he needs to do a better job at putting a roster together, which I completely agree with. I don't think that, you know, he was really off to so much of a bad start. You know, we got guys like Becton and Mims, but, you know, he hasn't been perfect. He's been far from perfect, you know? He signed Ryan Khalil his first year, and that's really all he did, and that was a big bust. And he basically has had a year now to really become, you know, to learn how to become a general manager, right? He's been in the league 22 years, something like that, 21 years, and now he's getting his, you know, big crack at it. And he needs to hit on these players, right? So he said he needs to do a better job at, you know, um, getting the roster together, putting a roster together, and really just putting a winning team together. Um, one of the biggest headlines was uh, Sam's future, and he didn't seem too confident in Sam Darnold. You know, they asked him, is Sam Darnold going to be here next year? He really said that's going to be the head coach's uh, decision. Um, it's going to be, everything's basically uh, going to be left up to this new head coach. He said Sam will be great in this league. He did not say Sam will be great on the Jets. And that is a huge difference from what he said in November. In November, at, you know, the halfway point of the season, he said that Sam Darnold is our quarterback moving forward. He said Sam Darnold is going to be the guy that we build around. And now he's kind of leaving it up to the head coach, which I understand. You don't want to scare anybody away. If there's a head coach out there that's right for the job and he thinks that he could fix Sam Darnold and he wants to move forward with Sam Darnold because Sam Darnold's only 23 years old and he's going into four years of a uh, NFL experience. He has been far from great. He's been far from perfect. I understand that. But if there is a head coach that's out there that really wants uh, to work with Sam Darnold, Joe Douglas and the Jets do not want to scare this guy away, which I understand. That's how you guys have to look at it. He's just leaving that door open with Sam Darnold. Do I think Joe Douglas personally wants Sam Darnold back on this team? No. I don't think that Joe Douglas has seen enough from Sam Darnold. And mind you, you know, Joe Douglas did not draft Sam Darnold. He's not, you know, Joe Douglas is not, in, you know, Sam's guy, vice versa. They're not married. They're not paired at the hip. So I think that they can easily move on from Sam Darnold and be completely okay with that. And I do think that's something that Joe Douglas would highly be interested in, especially when you finish, you know, with the second pick overall, you only finished, you know, 2-14, there has to be a lot of big roster changes. And he said that there's a lot of uh, decisions to be made. Is the quarterback going to be one of them? Definitely. Um, I really can't blame Joe Douglas either way. If we do keep Sam or if we do move on from him, it's really whatever. So, um, like I said, it was just a very different answer from the bye week when, you know, Joe Douglas really did double down on Sam Darnold and give Sam Darnold his full confidence. Um... Another thing that we did mention, that uh, Joe Douglas did mention, I should say, is he said that signing Marcus May was a priority. And I completely agree. Joe Douglas has gone on record before and admits letting Robbie walk was a mistake and stuff like that. Marcus May is the leader of the defense. He's the captain on the defense. One of the captains of the entire team. One of the most respected guys in the team. One of the best safeties in the NFL. I really do believe that. And he played his butt off this year. He played his tail off. There's no doubting that. And Marcus May should be rewarded. He played really well. He stepped up. And he proved that he's not Jamal Adams number two. Because while Jamal Adams was here, Marcus May was kind of always the guy in the shadow, the guy in the background. He didn't really get all the attention like Jamal did. Now that Jamal's gone, you know, Marcus May really stepped it up. Him and like Ashton Davis really stepped it up. Marcus May is proving why he's one of the best safeties in the league. You know, we've had some really great interceptions from him. He's really been a human highlight reel while he's been here. And I do think that he deserves to be re-signed. I'm going to be kind of upset if we don't re-sign him. I do think his trade value would be pretty good. But I do think that it is a must to get this guy on the team. The only thing is, I don't trust Joe Douglas to actually re-sign him. We've heard this before. We heard this, I want to keep Jamal a Jet for life. Which, obviously, Jamal kind of talked his way out of town. Marcus May doesn't seem like that type of player. But Marcus May is 
a vocal leader in the locker room. He spoke out against um, Greg Williams a few weeks ago in that uh, Raiders game. He's somebody that, you know, he speaks for the defense. And that's what a captain does. That's what a leader does. They all look up to him. We have a very young defense in that uh, locker room, guys. We need somebody like Marcus May. We need that guy who's going to step up and be that leader. So while I don't necessarily 100% trust Joe Douglas to uh, re-sign Marcus May, I do believe it will happen. I don't trust it, though. But I, I could see it happening. I want it to happen. And it should. So anyway, today um, we did kick off the head coach uh, searching jobs, the interviews. We started off with... Um, Chiefs offensive coordinator, uh, coordinator Eric Bieniemy, and listen, I like Eric Bieniemy, but it does scare me a little bit. He's one of my favorites. He's one of my top candidates. He's not my number one. He was my number one a few years ago, going into this uh, Adam Gaze era, but it does scare me that he's never actually got the job, right? He's had, you know, he's basically interviewed everywhere with every single team basically in the nfl he's been around he's had ton of inter of interviews why has he never gotten the job why is it always falling through at the last minute right a lot of teams were really interested closing to sign the, uh, close to signing this guy i don't understand why eric Bieniemy has never gotten the job i don't know what it is that uh scares players away or scares te you know teams away or whatever it is i don't understand like what the whole case is but for whatever reason Eric Bieniemy never gets the job, and he's been around a long time. So I was a lot higher on him, you know, the first time that we interviewed him than I am this time. And I understand that a lot of people don't think that he's really all that. A lot of people think he's really overrated, and that's a fair point. Eric Bieniemy is not the one calling the plays. It's not, you know, he's not the head coach. It's not really his team. Andy Reid does all that. But... Eric Bieniemy is in a winning culture. He's in a winning system. Eric Bieniemy knows a thing or two. He's going to bring that knowledge to the Jets. He's going to want to succeed. He's going to want to prove every team that passed on him. He's going to want to prove them wrong. He is. And I really wouldn't be too upset if we didn't get Eric Bieniemy. Do I really think we're actually going to get Eric Bieniemy? We won't know for a little while. If we do get him, like I said, I won't be too upset. I'll, I'll embrace it. I don't hate the guy. I do see why people think that he's overrated, though. It's like I said, you know, it's not really his team. He's not the one calling these plays, but he's in the system. He's He has the culture. And what I like about him, too, is the energy. You know, he's not, he's not afraid to get in somebody's face. And that's what we need. We don't need a zombie on the sidelines. We need somebody full of energy. I While Rex Ryan, uh, Rex Ryan was... A flawed coach. He was far from perfect. I do believe that his energy, you know, I loved his energy. I loved how passionate he was. I love that he was loud. I love that he talked. Players like that. Players like somebody that's going to fire them up. You know, players like a punch him in the face kind of guy. And that's what Eric Bieniemy is. That's what Rex Ryan was. I'm not saying that Rex Ryan's coming back. That's not what I am saying. Don't get it twisted. That's not where I'm going with this. All I'm saying is that players like, you know, the energy guy. They like... A passionate guy. A guy who's not going to be a zombie on the sidelines like our last two head coaches. Todd Bowles and Adam Gaze were horrible. They just stood there. Adam Gaze just stared at his pl uh, play sheet the entire game. Um, some, some of the other candidates that I've been going around, I've been seeing Arthur Smith, the Titans offensive coordinator. He's doing great things with that Titans offense. He really is. Can't knock him for that. It's exciting. It's intriguing. I wouldn't mind bringing him here. He's not one of my top candidates, but I would definitely, like I said, I would not mind having him here. Um, most of the time, the Titans were known for their defense. And then, you know, Arthur Smith started taking over. And now, you know, they're really known for their offense. And Ryan Tannehill is doing great things over there. Other quarterbacks are doing great things over there. Their offense is really starting to get things going. Bringing him here... I think would be an upgrade. Anything would be an upgrade, actually. But I would not mind having Arthur Smith here. He's not one of my top candidates, but I'm not hating the move, right? If we do land him, I'm not going to hate it. Uh, another um, coaching candidate. Matt, um, 
Eberfluss, I believe I'm saying that right. Excuse me if I'm not the uh, Colts defensive coordinator. Many people on Twitter are high on him. I'm not too big on him. You know, again, I wouldn't mind having him here, but he's not my number one. But a lot of people on the internet are high on him. He's getting a lot of praise. Would I mind bringing him here? No. Do is he my, like I said, is he my number one? No. But my personal favorite is the Bills offensive coordinator, Brian Dable. And I do believe we're going to get him. I do definitely believe that we're going to get him. We can't interview him for the next like week or a couple weeks, something like that. We can't interview him right away. But he's been around, right? He's been, he knows the AFC East, that's for sure. Um, 10 seasons in New England, two stents with Bill Belichick. Um, he's worked with Nick Saban, winning a uh, national championship in Alabama. And then obviously the work that he's doing right now with the Bills. Look at Josh Allen. Josh Allen and Sam Darnold, obviously they're best friends. And coming out of that 2018 draft, everybody thought that Sam Darnold was a much better pick and a better prospect than Josh Allen was. Very fair to say. At the time, he was. That's a fact. But over these three years, you know, we're seeing what coaching does for these quarterbacks. What a bad coach does and what a good coach does. Sean McDermott, Brian Dable, Josh Allen, all the way up here. Dow Loggins, Adam Gaze. Jeremy Bates, Todd Bowles, Sam Darnold, down here. Why is that? Because coaching is important for these young players, especially developing a young quarterback. Brian Dable, look at that offense. Putting up 56 points against Miami. They're destined to go to the Super Bowl this year. It, I would not be surprised one bit if they go to the Super Bowl this year. That Chiefs and Bills game, hopefully it happens. That's going to be a really good game. That's going to be a really interesting game. I'm really looking forward to watching that, guys. I'm excited for that. The Bills have turned things around really quick. Brian Dable, I really believe he's going to be our next head coach. And I am excited. I'm 100% pumped to bring this guy in here. I love it. I would personally love it. Another one of my favorites, favorite number, you know, 1B, 1A, whatever, is Matt Campbell, Iowa State's head coach. I really like him. He's like a no-nonsense guy. He's big with the energy, and it's going to be such an upgrade from Adam Gaze. It's going to be such a difference from Adam Gaze. It's going to be like the Cotite, uh, Cotite Parcells era, right? We have Cotite now. Well, we had him. Now we're going to bring in Parcells. We're going to bring in Matt Campbell. Matt Campbell is great. You know, he's a, he has the head coach experience, not in the NFL, but he has head coaching experience in college, which um, Joe Douglas and Christopher Johnson both said that they're open to. It doesn't have to be an established NFL coordinator. It doesn't have to be an established NFL head coach. It could be somebody from college. It could be whoever fits the Jets system, they say. Matt Campbell, I really like. So between Brian Dable and Matt Campbell, those are my two favorites. Those are the guys I really want in here. We have not reached out as far as I know to Matt uh, Campbell. It's just something that really intrigues me. It really has intrigued me for a long time now. And I know he turned down the job last time. Let's hope that things turn around this time. I really hope he takes the job. Between him, him and Matt Dable, those are my two uh, number one favorites. Eric Bianami, probably a hard number three. Like I said, I do like Bianami. I do see why people think he's overrated, though. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I do want uh, one of those three guys. All right, so getting into Jets' questions this week, right? So we have a few questions to get into. Two from uh, Jack on Twitter, at Jack at 5858Jack. Let me just say, Jack is a huge um, supporter of the channel. He always tweets me his questions. You know, he's a big follower of mine on Twitter. You know, I get uh, interactions with him all the time. He's a great dude. If you're not following him, definitely go give him a follow, right? So the first question that he asks is, where is it? Are we even sure Joe Douglas would consider keeping Sam Darnold? Seems like that ship has sailed. All right, he tweeted that to me last week, but actually when he tweeted to me, I was already like in the process of doing this, uh, of the, doing that episode. So I didn't get to it until this week. Obviously, it's, it's a bit older. And uh, yeah, it does seem like that ship has sailed, right? It does not actually seem, like I said earlier, that Joe Douglas is too big on Sam Darnold. I do not think that... Um, Joe Douglas would have a problem moving on from Sam Darnold and getting like a Justin Fields or a Zach Wilson or somebody like that. Um, so yeah, that really answers that. You know, I kind of answered that earlier in the episode too. Um, his second question, as Jets fans, are we a little too quick to put our trust in Joe Douglas? He has been far from perfect. His demeanor is terrible. 
And other than the uh, Jamal trade, Becton and Becton, um, he has a questionable resume in terms of player accusations. That is true. He does. Joe Douglas is far from perfect, and Joe Douglas has a lot to prove. Joe Douglas is not going to pass, right? He's just as guilty as the players and as Adam Gaze and as Christopher Johnson. And he's not going to have a pass until we start winning. Until he brings in a lot of good talent. Because let's be honest, his free agents uh, signings are really not that great. You know, we bought in um, Pierre Desir. That was a bust. And, you know, just a couple other guys. I'm not going to get into every one. But, um, yeah, he's been far from perfect. But if anything, we do see that he drafts well. I do think that he had a great draft. Um, Denzel Mims, Brian, uh, Brandon Mam or whatever uh, man's name is. I can't think of his first name at the, off the uh, top of my head. Uh, Braden, I think it is. Yeah, Braden Mam. Um, Makai Becton, obviously. So I think that we did have a good draft class. Free agency is a little shaky. He did say that he's not going to be reckless, but he will be aggressive in this uh, free agent signing this year, right? We need to get some big names in here. Obviously, the one that comes to mind is Allen Robinson. That's been the one that uh, a lot of um, guys have been wanting. He's obviously the wide receiver for the uh, Chicago Bears. And I would love him in here. I have nothing wrong with that. I would love, absolutely love to bring in Allen Robinson. He's immediate upgrade. He's immediately that number one wide receiver that we've been missing for years that the team has really been lacking since um, at least 2015 with uh, Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker. And uh, I really think that'd be a huge upgrade. That would be a huge positive, a huge boost for the team. And let's hope that uh, we could do that. But yeah, definitely he... Um, I think that some people do put a little bit of uh, too much faith in him. And myself included. You know, I, I'm a big... Uh, Joe Douglas fan, but he does have his flaws, and, you know, he has a lot to prove. This is going to be a big offseason for him, and this is really going to be a make-or-break year for him. You know, he's in it for the long haul, six years or whatever it is, but this is going to say a lot about him. You know, we're going to learn a lot about uh, Joe Douglas during this uh, offseason. Anyway, like, again, thank you, Jack, for the questions. The next one is from Mark Williams at MarksTheSpotNC on Twitter. We'll give him a follow. Why did Jets fans insist on taking the second best quarterback and using the second pick when the team has bigger needs like improving the O-line? They are fixated about uh, fields, and I don't get it. Why? Well, you know, I do agree with you. And up until, you know, Sunday's game, I was a lot higher on Sam Darnold than I am now. It's because of the inconsistency of Sam Darnold. You know, he has some good games. He has some bad games. The interceptions is a huge issue. So, there's so many holes on this team. But I do understand why some people want Justin Fields. Look at how he played against Clemson. He lit that game up. That was a huge game for him. But I also think... That Justin Fields is very inconsistent himself. And that's the one thing that does scare me. Do we want to get rid of one inconsistent quarterback for another inconsistent quarterback? I understand the hype around him. And I understand that if Trevor Lawrence wasn't in this draft, then Justin Fields would be the number one prospect. Justin Fields is not a bad quarterback. He has a lot to prove. And he's going to have a lot to prove, especially if he comes to the Jets. Because the Jets fans, they're on their last straw. They are about to give up with this team, right? We need, to get, we need a hit. That's what it is. So, you know, that's why a lot of players are over Sam Darnold. That's why a lot of players um, insist on taking the second best quarterback. I understand it because Sam Darnold is very inconsistent. That's why. All right. So the last one today comes from GRC, Greg Tall Dude 435, or 534 exactly, uh, excuse me, on Twitter. What kind of draft capital would you give up if Sam, if Sean Payton wanted to come here via trade? Wow, that is a good question. Um, I would throw the bag at him. <laughs> if Sean Payton wanted to come here, you best believe I'm paying him, and you best believe I want him here. Sean Payton is, you know, that's instant credibility to the team. That's a, you know, a coach that this team has lacked for many years, and that is a really good coach. 
he has been good and he's had good teams with that Saints for a number of years. And I would love to bring Sean Payton here. If he becomes available, we have to get him. I start, you know, I don't think he's going to want to come here. But, it, you know, like Bill Cowher said, the Jets job is very interesting. So, you know, maybe he does want to come here. I don't know. It's going to be a huge risk for him if he does. I, you know, Drew Brees is probably going to be uh, retiring. He might want to move on. There's been some rumors that Sam Darnold might go to the Saints. If Sean Payton comes here, we have to throw the bags at him. What kind of draft capital would I give up? Um, I would give up our second first round pick. I really would. And maybe a third or a fourth. That It would have to be something big. But he's a big time head coach. And we have to pay that Jets tax. Guys aren't going to want to come here for nothing. The Saints aren't going to want to let him go for nothing. We're going to have to pay up if we want him. But I do think that he's definitely somebody worth taking. I would definitely, I would throw the bag at him. I would, whatever money he wants. What do you want? What he, th Give me the offer. You know, you want $15 million a year, eight-year contract, you're getting it. Anything to get him here. That would be a great pick. Um, thank you, Greg, for the question. Also, thank you, Mark Williams, for that question. I appreciate the questions. If you guys have any questions, all you have to do is tweet them to me. I'll do my best to answer them. At EverythingNYJ on Twitter, if you haven't followed me already, go follow me. I'll follow you back. Um, that's going to wrap it up. Thank you, guys. It's going to be a huge offseason next uh, week. With the Everything NYJ podcast, we have um, draft and players coming. You know, I have a lot of draft content that's going to be coming next week, starting next week. It's going to be a long off season, but don't worry, guys. I have you guys covered for the entire off season. Any breaking news, you know, I'm going to be reporting it. I'm going to be doing the Everything NYJ podcast all off season long. Um, obviously, the review reaction videos are going to be stopping, but. What I've been thinking about, and you guys let me know what you guys think, you know, leave me a comment or tweet me, whatever you guys want to do. I might be doing some of the most famous Jets games, you know, like doing the review reaction for some of those games, like the Monday Night Miracle, maybe those two AFC Championship games, some of the bigger games in Jet history, right? Maybe that uh, Bills game, week 17 against, you know, against the Bills, 2015, where Fitzpatrick choked. I'm going to be doing some big games. I want to. I, anyway, I might. I don't know if I'm definitely going to be doing them. I might be doing them, go back, watch some highlights. We'll see. It's, you know, I'm debating it. If you guys uh, want to see that, just let me know. Uh, comments in the uh, YouTube section or just tweet them to me, direct message me, whatever you guys want. Let me know what you guys think about that. Anyways, thank you guys for the continuous support. I hope you guys are having a great new year so far. Um, thank you guys for watching. Finally, I got my jet stuff back on. I appreciate all you guys. Much love and much respect. Thank you guys for watching. Go Jets. Have a great night. Thank you.